A cricket ball rolls across the border. Not just any border, a border littered with mines and guarded by Indian soldiers. And so, a little terrorist is born. Welcome back. This is fiction, of course, a short film, Little Terrorist, but it's based on a true story. Two years ago, a Pakistani boy mistakenly crossed the border into India. The Indian Prime Minister, Atal Bihari Vajpayee, at the time, eventually got the child reunited with his family in Pakistan. In Little Terrorist, the film, Indian troops suspect the boy is trying to infiltrate the border when he's just, in fact, trying to retrieve a cricket ball. The guards search for him, but a Hindu schoolmaster hides the boy in his home and gets him back to his family in a Pakistani village. The short film has won numerous awards and was nominated even for an Oscar, an Academy Award. A short time ago, I spoke with the director, Ashwin Kumar, about the message of the film. These two cultures that seem to have these huge political differences, actually, when you get onto the ground, it's not that different, even though religion does divide people in certain ways. Um, there is a common bonhomie and a common feeling of uh, humanity that does exist between the two people. Indian and Pakistani students you'll find in campuses all over the United States of America and Europe uh, being the best of friends. Mm -hmm. So I feel that culturally there really there is not that much difference. It's the uh, differences that have been imposed due to artificial boundaries that were drawn about 50, 60 years ago. But these artificial the real crux of the issue. I was going to say these artificial boundary boundaries created situations that were so tense that they led to war several times that they've led to suspicion on both sides of this border. Why do you think that is? Well, I mean, it's um, it's this is precisely the, this is this is this is this is my question. Actually, you're asking me my own question, and I don't have an answer for it. Uh, this is the reason I made this film, why? You know, because um, I pose exactly the same question that the cultures are so similar and the people on the ground are, 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 are happy, uh, you know, uh, interacting and mingling with each other. Why do we have these differences? Surely it's entirely artificial. And that's my, and that's my point, that these are artificial political compulsions. Yeah, you know, it reminds me of, of sometimes what is said about the Middle East, that when people who live in the Middle East actually uh, live abroad, they get along very well with each other because culturally there are so many uh, similarities. But one of the things that uh, was interesting about your film and the crew, the crew sometimes would, uh, according to things that I've read you say, pay their own way to go to the location shoots. Why were they so dedicated, do you think? Why was this so important for them to make this film? Well, I mean, the crew was drawn mainly from Europe, and of course we had Indian elements in the crew. Um, I think it was a script that really drew them to the film, and the fact that they had the opportunity to make a film. A short film usually is about a, I mean, it's usually a one-line joke, or it's about two people in an apartment, you know, not getting along, and things like that. Short films are very rarely about political themes, and themes that go beyond the cinema screen. Um, they are portfolio pieces for most filmmakers in order to present their credentials to the rest of the world. So I think the interesting thing about this film was that it was not just a short film which told a pretty neat story, but it also told that it, it also had broader ramifications on political and uh, social issues, uh, which, which, which isn't very common uh, in the genre of short films. And, that, and perhaps that is the reason why everyone decided to fund their own airfare and come out to India to make this little journey with me. Now, uh, the film is about a 10-year-old boy, just so we tell our viewers who haven't been able to see it, who crosses the border between Pakistan and India mistakenly looking for a cricket ball. Now, what reaction did you get from both Indian uh, viewers and also Pakistani viewers? Well, there was tremendous empathy and sort of sympathy uh, for the predicament of this kid, you know, who, um, I mean, all he's done is run after his cricket ball. It happens to be across a barbed wire, and nobody's told him that that barbed wire shouldn't be crossed, you know, and suddenly he's on the other side, and, um, and um, he's adopted by this community of people that he's never seen and met, but they speak the same language, and it's funny, and it's alien, and at the same time, it's familiar, and, and you are invited to share the point of view of this child who's getting... Um, in equal doses, measures of confusion and um, understanding at the same time. And um, that's basically what the film does, is that it invites the audience to participate in this little child's um, little journey, you know. What do you think a film like that can do to better relations between people? Do you think one piece of art, one film can make a difference? No. 
I don't think one film or one piece of art can make a big difference. Um, what I do know is that it can reiterate, it can remind people about things that they may have, that may have slid back into their subconscious. That's what I think art is there for. That's 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 the way I view cinema: is a reiteration, it's a reminder. It's not really an instrument of social change, as such. Um, it sort of awakens our our certain recessed sort of senses or memories.